I like. <laughs> what the hell is this? When I mention Disney, you probably think of this, and this, and this. But what about this? This is Roadside Romeo, a film that was made in India but was produced by Disney. And let me tell you folks, it has it all. Bizarre animation, ugly characters, an incoherent story, and whatever the hell this is. This is one of the most requested things I've been asked to check out. To which I say to you all, how dare you? But seriously, my curiosity was piqued. There were people who even said that this film was actually good. Also, I'm a big fan of Disney films. I've basically seen them all. But their foreign film department is a bit of a mystery to me. So when people told me that this was a Disney movie, well, I was hooked. Too bad it's ugly as sin. Another thing of interest about Roadside Romeo is that it was made specifically in India. Now, I know of Bollywood and how crazy those films can be. Like, unapologetically crazy. But I barely know anything about their animated content, except for Matu and Patlu. Dude, I am fucking up their names. Matu, Patlu? Oh, forgive me. I'm, I'm such a white guy. Th these guys. Th th those guys right there. So I was low-key excited to see what Roadside Romeo had to offer, to see their cultural spin on a story and these characters. Uh, yeah. I think I had my hopes too high. Alright, so let's talk about the origins of this movie. I already mentioned that it had to do with Disney and India, but there's a little bit more to it. The guy who was in charge of Roadside Romeo was Jugal Hansaraj. He's a big actor in India who also writes, produces, and directs movies. But Roadside Romeo would be his first time working on an animated film, and also his last. But his inspiration for the film was somewhat cute. He said he was stuck in traffic and saw some dogs in the city playing in garbage. He said that he knew what he wanted his film and his characters to be about. Trash! I mean, stray dogs. I'm the trash man! Jugal then teamed up with Yash Ross Films and the Walt Disney Company India to produce the movie, which was actually kind of a big deal at the time. From what I read, Roadside Romeo would be the first Indian 3D animated film for the country, so there was quite a bit writing on this, at least enough to get Disney's involvement on the project. So the team got to work, and in October of 2008, they released Roadside Romeo. A movie that was the first of its kind for India, and represented all of the hopes and dreams of the Indian animation industry. It flopped. Yeah, this movie performed poorly at the box office. It even had an international release, and was shown in the US. But even that wasn't enough. Roadside Romeo was a financial bust, and the reviews for the film were even worse. Critics said that the story was predictable, the characters were generic, and that the film was overflowing with cliches. They're not wrong. There was another dog-themed movie that came out around this time, and it went by the name of Bolt. It looks superior to this. Of course, to be fair, this movie was made by a team of experienced artists, but still, it's night and day when you compare it to Roadside Romeo. Night, day, night, day, night, day. For the record, I'm completely in favor of seeing other countries produce animated films. That's an excellent way of seeing their perspective on stories and characters due to their culture and upbringing. But for Roadside Romeo, it just doesn't click. It has a few of the Bollywood hallmarks, but they don't work in favor of the movie. If anything, it just harms the overall flow of the film and looks really bad. <laughs> All right, let's go over the movie. We start off by flying through the clouds as we zoom in onto this mansion. And then boom, it's song time. So this is Romeo, 
Our main character and playboy extraordinaire. He likes cars, fancy foods, and girls. Lots and lots of girls. Diamonds and pearls and girls, 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 girls. This anatomy is hard to watch. It's like they're dogs, but they're not. And no matter what position they go with, it looks ugly or uncanny. I've got these girls in my arms. So it turns out that Romeo was the dog of a rich family, but was thrown out into the streets. Now he has to fend for himself, and he does not like it. <laughs> Something that caught my attention is how Romeo speaks in both Hindi and English. Like, he goes back and forth between the two languages, and I don't know why. <sighs> anyway, such is life. Ek pal sab kuch hai, aur dusre pal kuch bhi nahi. Romeo then meets up with a band of dogs. We got Big Nose, Buzzcut, Kitty Girl, and Sid from Ice Age. Medium. So it turns out that this gang of dogs are actually a bunch of wimps who are trying to act tough. So Romeo decides to befriend them by giving them a makeover. I like how they show them off as improved, but they don't really look any better. Like, they got some new clothes and that's it. So Romeo has the brilliant idea to start up a salon so the dogs can make some money. We even get a very Bollywood-esque song about it. Real talk, the song is catchy, but man, the animation is hard to watch. I'm not sure, but it looks like they use motion capture for the animation but I couldn't find any information to back this up. Regardless, it still looks very uncanny. I, I like how they light this one dog's head on fire and they let it stay on fire for the remainder of the song. I appreciate the consistency. So at this point, we're about 20 minutes into the film and you're probably wondering, where's the love interest? This guy is named Romeo, so there has to be a girl character he falls for, right? Well, here you go. Her name is Layla, and she likes to dance on the rooftops with the moon at her back. Oh God, look at her hair physics. So Romeo, being the playboy that he is, just cuts right into it and begins dancing with her. Hey mom, there's like two ugly anthro demon dogs dancing on the roof. Get the gun. Romeo, being the hopeless romantic that he is, goes right for the kill and tries to kiss Layla cause he's a scumbag. Fortunately, she hits the brakes. Real talk, uh, Romeo sucks. Look at all of this bull crap he throws at her to try and get into her pants. But, but I dance when I dance, girls always kiss me. Sorry, but this girl is not. I'm about to end this man's whole career. Whoa! My God! Oh, Jesus! So it's the next day, and we find ourselves back at the hair salon. Huh, we got some hidden Mickeys in the film. <laughs> we finally get some conflict in the movie as our first antagonist shows up, Chanu. He's an underling for this nasty gang leader named Charlie. <laughs> this is one ugly ass dog. Though his waist is the envy of every Instagram influencer. <laughs> so Romeo's friends suck up to Chanu so they can stay on his good side. After all, they haven't paid what they owe to Charlie's gang. It's essentially the mafia and extortion. No charging, forketing. Romeo then shows up and gets really pissed off at the guy. He even calls him a cartoon. 
So Romeo freaks out that his friends are giving this guy a free haircut, and he decides to beat his ass. Romeo pagal kutton ke samne haddiyan nahi phekta. Now scram! Hey, scram! Unlike Romeo, his friends are super afraid of Charlie and his gang, and they go off to beg for his forgiveness. We then get to meet the main villain of the film. And, whew, I thought Romeo was unpleasant, but he's got nothing on Charlie. Mm. <laughs> Hi! <laughs> <laughs> go yester, go wester. Anna is the best. Let's just take a moment and look at this guy. We got this fat ass bulldog who's got like a bike chain around his neck. He's got these hipster glasses missing a lens, and the guy has disgusting hygiene. So here's something that's interesting. Charlie has three ninja chicks who work for him. He calls them his angels. Charlie's angels. The angels! Yeah, Mary Angels. Charlie's the angels. <laughs> and just look at them. They don't even look like dogs. Polyester Padmini. Ugh, uh, stop looking at them. Romeo's friends get captured. So he decides to go steal some bones from Charlie so he can pay off his bones to Charlie. Okay, works for me. So Romeo and his friends escape Charlie's hideout. Along the way home, Romeo breaks off and runs into Layla. Except this time, he has flowers. But she does not fall for his empty words. I, I think I'm falling in love with you. <laughs> he even almost falls to his death, and she straight up laughs at him. Oh, Layla, you were so close to being my favorite character. But then, of course, she starts to give in to Romeo. She tells him that if he truly loves her, that he'll show up at her next performance at some club. And then she literally leaves him hanging. The pit done. But, but hello. So Romeo and his gang head to the club so he can go meet up with Layla. We even get a fat joke. Cause why not? Ta-da! Oh, fatty, but... <sighs> Excuse me, please. Ta-da! Layla! It's at this point in the movie where we finally get to the main plot. Romeo likes Layla. Charlie likes Layla. And he'll kill anybody who crushes on her. What a good guy. He even shows up for every performance of hers at the club. Long live <laughs> So Layla's performance begins as her anthro backup girls start to dance along. I cannot get over their weird anthro bodies. They do not look good. Look at her tail. It's so high up on her back. But Romeo can't keep it in his pants anymore and jumps like 20 feet into the air and lands on stage. Then he starts to sing and dance along. And for some reason, everybody else in the audience starts to freak out and have seizures. But the S and M police show up and haul Romeo back to Charlie's hideout. Please stop it! Oh, please stop! It's hurting! How is that hurting you? The, the, the ropes aren't even that tight. We then get this scene where Charlie cries about Layla because she doesn't like him. That he does all of these things for her, but she won't reciprocate the same feelings. Look at me, Layla, wantly giving me gum. Oh, what to do, Mama? What to do, Ayo? Now, I'm not sure if the movie is trying to make me feel bad for him, 
Not that it really matters, though. He's a gross, entitled piece of garbage character who thinks very highly of himself. He's like one of those guys who sends a dick pic and gets very confused when he doesn't get a message back. You so butty full, show me over gonna Send me naked pic, hello bitch lasagna Romeo then tells Charlie that he can make Layla fall for him, that she will be his girlfriend, cause he is good with the ladies. Allegedly. Romeo proving once again that he's an awful person. But so is Charlie. He even yells at Romeo so loud that he shakes a satellite in orbit. After that, we get an intermission. <laughs> okay. So we cut back to the movie in a classy way by watching a bird poop on the cat. <laughs> Romeo's friends tell him that he's an idiot and should leave town or Charlie will kill him. But then Layla shows up to the salon and Romeo starts to think with his dick again. Though to be fair, Layla's down to fuck at this point. Uh, hi. Um. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, of course. So Romeo gives Layla a sexy haircut, along to some music. And you gotta love the haircut that he gives her. It screams middle-class soccer mom. Excuse me, may, may I speak to the manager? You messed up my non-fat chai tea latte with light foam. We then come across these stray dogs having a barking contest to see who can wake up the most humans. Ready! I actually like this. It's clever, and I can see a bunch of street dogs playing this for fun. All right, movie, you get one point. We then get another sensual song with Romeo and Layla, as Romeo powers up with his high-pitched voice. Real talk, this is a very sensual movie for kids. Romeo and Layla toss around the word caress and are all up on each other. Romeo almost gets that kiss he wants and puckers up his lips, <laughs> which look a lot like a butthole. <laughs> In Romeo's passion, he forgot to hook Layla up with Charlie, cause he's a forgetful liar who sucks. But then he comes up with a brilliant idea. <sighs> to dress his cat friend up and disguise her as Layla so they could trick Charlie. Hey, Mamu, <laughs> Not sure what the end game of this plan was, but the cat character just rips into him. <laughs> it's, it's actually kind of great. Behold, the only good character in the movie. Also, let's take a moment to appreciate the onslaught of words that the cat unleashed on Charlie. She straight up verbally eviscerates the guy. And the best part? She totally gets away with it. So Charlie gets upset that Layla turned him down, and Romeo finds himself back in the S&M rope again. In typical Romeo fashion, he lies again, and says that Layla will go on a date with Charlie. And how does Romeo convince Charlie? With a song, of course. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, 
uh, this hurts. This music video really hurts. It looks like one of those old commercials that advertise ringtones. And of course, he's wearing a fedora. Also, shout out to the angels who are just phoning in their dance moves. Look at them, they're just, yeah, move my hands. This counts, right? And this song wouldn't be complete without one WTF moment, which comes in the form of an imaginary child that Charlie and Layla have. <laughs> So after that song about hooking up Charlie with Layla, Romeo immediately runs off to go make out with her. But oh no, he gets caught in the act by Charlie's minion. Layla then finds out that Romeo has been lying the entire time and promised her to Charlie, which really creeps her out, and I do not blame her. Uh, Lela, I can explain. I had no choice. Yes or no? No. Uh, yes. But I can explain. Ow! How can this happen? How can this happen? How can this happen? I'm actually glad that everybody is realizing that Romeo is a horrible guy. Layla then takes off and leaves Romeo in the dust. We then get this hard cut to Romeo and his gang, running for their lives, as Charlie and his angels chase them down. <laughs> Who was that? Uh, th that was so random. So Charlie's angels, <laughs> you get it? Capture Romeo's friends. We even get a stupid Matrix reference too. But of course, of course, generic love and bad writing are in the air, as the angels, for some reason, fall for these stupid looking dogs. <laughs> Charlie then corners Romeo as they have a boring ass fight scene. That's mainly them talking smack to each other and telling the other to throw the first punch. <laughs> but oh no, the dog catchers show up and Charlie gets cornered by the humans. And for no reason whatsoever, Romeo decides to save Charlie and basically take a bullet for the guy. And I don't understand why. Romeo's character at this point has been so selfish and deceitful. So why would he do this? It came out of nowhere. So now Charlie feels bad about Romeo getting captured, so he takes off to go save him. After a contrived action scene, Romeo gets freed from the cage, but his poor heart is still broken. Layla doesn't love him. Oh no. I especially like this scene in particular because his friend is trying to comfort Romeo with his nonsensical words. And Romeo's like, dude, shut the hell up. I don't care. Today, or say, you not hand correct. Please shut up, you weirdo. So then we see Romeo leaving town on a train, but everybody shows up and tells Romeo that he's forgiven, that he can be with Layla. So she runs in slow motion to jump on board the train. Visually, this looks awful, but Romeo accidentally falls off the train and decides to stay with the group. <laughs> We then get one last outro song. Darling, 
possible. And that's it. That's the movie. But here's something I was not expecting. Uh, this film has a blooper reel. Remember how Pixar used to have bloopers in their credits back in the day? Well, they do the same here. Oh, God, it's on me! All right, so let's go over my five points. First, the story. The thing that stands out to me the most are the characters. Every single one of them sucked. Well, except for the kitty. She was okay. But seriously, I did not like anybody else from the cast. Romeo was a scheming, lustful liar who only wanted to get with Layla. Charlie was an obnoxious bully who was equally as lustful and twice as gross. And then Layla, who I had such high hopes for, just turned out to be a generic love interest. She had some good pushback at first, but after the club scene, it was all downhill. None of the characters' motivations worked for me. Like, why did Romeo help Charlie at the end? He hated him up to this point, and Romeo hasn't shown any moral fiber of why he would help out Charlie. It was totally random and out of character, and only happened to progress the plot. And the plot itself was just dumb and slow. Seriously, this movie drags hard, and the pacing is really bad. Romeo's in love! I'm in love, 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 I'm in love! Dude, love hurts. Next, there's the voice acting. So, this one is kind of hard to judge, since it was in Hindi. There was a review from an Indian critic who said that the voice acting was bad, and the music was even worse. But I have no way of validating that, because I only speak English. Personally, I thought the music was fine. But what do I know? After that, there's the dialogue. Again, it's hard for me to judge this since I don't speak Hindi. There might be inflections that are lost in the subtitles, and I would have no way of knowing. But the exchange of lines that I can read come across as clunky. Like, there's a lot of references in this movie to other Indian films. And if you don't understand them, they just confuse you with what's happening. It's already hard enough to keep up, but then they pull a random Indian reference and leave me in the dust. Perhaps Indian viewers can appreciate it, but from my point of view, it's very confusing. Next, there's the editing. Eh, it was okay. There's the occasional generic sound clip that takes me out of the movie, but outside of that, there's not much to write home about. Gotta get those fart jokes in, though. And finally, there's the animation. <laughs> Gosh, where to start? The designs of the characters look rough. Get it? Cause, like, they're dogs, and they borf. Please shut up, you weirdo. But seriously, I do not like the way they look. It kind of falls into that same realm of sheep and wolves, where the characters are like pseudo-humans, and pick when they want to walk upright and use their hands, or when they want to run on all fours. And for Roadside Romeo, the characters look ugly in either position. They either stand up with screwed up postures, or run on their hands and feet with their butts hanging in the air. It just, it just doesn't work. Now, to give credit where credit is due, I thought that some of the backgrounds in the movie were acceptable, but that's about it. They basically failed in every other category, and these characters fall right into Uncanny Valley. As far as improving the movie goes, I would pick a style for the dogs to consistently follow make them anthrohumanoids or just dogs, not both. 
That would make things easier for the designs of the characters and how they move instead of going back and forth. For the characters themselves, I would personally write Romeo to be much more likable. You can let him remain as a playboy, but make him a playboy with a heart of gold. One who likes to show off, but is also helping people on the side. Maybe instead of lying to steal Layla's love, he instead lied to protect her from Charlie at the cost of him not getting her. At least that would make his story more enjoyable. Oh, come on. Sirf ek kiss. No. Also, make Layla more independent. Now, they were close to this at the start, but threw it all away in favor of a boring girl character who only exists for the guys to fight over. I want to look like your Layla. Romeo's Layla. <sighs> and for Charlie, completely revamp him to be a villain who discovers that he isn't in love with Layla, that through his escapades with Romeo, he discovers that he's in love with him and truly finds himself. <laughs> like this story would ever happen. I am full of style. <laughs> See? So yeah, this movie isn't the worst thing I've ever seen, but it's far from good. It's more peculiar than anything. With a few alterations, this film could pass as acceptable. I do encourage foreign filmmakers, though, to keep pursuing animation and allow their culture to shape their stories. Some of the best animated movies and shows out there were created outside the United States, and hopefully, India can catch up in due time. With over 1.3 billion people living there, I can only imagine that someone has a good story to tell. Just promise me you'll cut back on the sexist stuff and leave the Uncanny Valley characters behind, okay? Okay, thanks India. Russia, you're next. Today's video was sponsored by Audible. So whenever I research a topic, I like to get my brain churning by listening to other people speak. This can take the form of a podcast or listening to an audiobook. And for me, I get everything I need on that front from Audible. On Audible, you can get access to an incredible selection of audiobooks. This includes mysteries, thrillers, fantasy, sci-fi, and many more. They boast the largest selection of audiobooks in the world. So there's a lot to pick from. And with Audible Originals, there's even more to pick from. Right now, I'm listening to It by Stephen King, narrated by Stephen Weber. I love the 2017 movie, but my girlfriend told me that the book was much better and had a lot more to it. Needless to say, I'm totally hooked. And being able to listen to the story while driving or doing chores saves me lots of time. It also inspires me to write my own videos. You can listen on any device you want and take it with you wherever you go. At the gym, at school, at work, anywhere. And as a member, you can pick three titles every month. One audiobook and two Audible originals you can't hear anywhere else. So go hit up Audible and check out their wide variety of content. Get started today with a 30-day trial when you go to audible.com slash sabrespark or text sabrespark to 500-500. Go get your free trial today.